Hello, I'm Marty with UltraSave. Today we're going to discuss a few options on suspension trauma, rescue, and a few innovations that have happened uh, in the industry, you know, as far as feedback from uh, local fire departments, uh, rescue departments on mine sites, uh, some of the input they put in with the product. Uh, one of the problems with uh, harnesses, of course, is normally when people take a harness out of the bag, they automatically just put it on and assume it's okay. But these things can act like tourniquets when not adjusted properly. One of the first things we want to look at when we're taking one of these out of the bags is to make sure that the harness is adjusted evenly. And there's ways you can do that. There's stitch patterns here that when we take it out of the bag should line up. If we see one is higher than the other one, we can adjust this material through this D-ring slider to get them evenly. When we're picking this thing up, it's like a four-leg bridle. Both sides should be even. That way when we have a downward drop, the impact to our spinal cord is even. We don't have to worry about uh, snapping our back or doing more injuries to ourselves. They have torso adjustments, leg adjustments. When we put this harness on, it should be adjusted to our body size, not the person before. When we put this harness on, if this D-ring slider is too high up in my neck, one of the things I can do is I can adjust with a little bit of force this thing down more in between the, my shoulder blades. A lot of people don't do this. They'll wear the thing all day long with that D-ring slider up against their neck being very uncomfortable when it just took a small adjustment to make it more comfortable. Let's see if I got it closer. I feel a little more comfortable there. Also the torso adjustment we want to have right. Uh, guys may have the torso all the way up and you'll see them walk around with the leg straps like a wedgie all day long. Every time that person bends down, that harness is pulling with them. We want to have the leg straps more horizontal to the ground versus in this position. This is going to let us know that we've got this thing up way too high. We can bring it down. But let's keep in mind that we also want to bring the leg straps up where they should be. Now, a lot of the old style harnesses, uh, especially not adjusted properly, can act as a tourniquet if you don't have them on right. You have these inch and three quarter straps that have a tendency to act as a tourniquet on the leg uh, in a drop when someone's hanging for a while. The blood will pool in the legs, uh, becoming toxic. Blood clots can develop. And we've had a few uh, uh, suspension trauma fatalities uh, in the industry. Uh, to prevent that, you'll see a lot of companies coming up with uh, this on their harnesses, uh, making the surface area around the leg wider to allow blood flow to pass through. Uh, dealing with the fire department, their request is, you know, they have the exercise straps. A lot of times they're in the warehouse during a drop. They're not with the person. Why can't we make this harness more like a saddle? something you could set in all day long. So you'll see a lot more companies coming up with harnesses that have the leg pla uh, straps here, uh, a, a butt strap in here where the person can sit. Um, the exercise straps don't work very well if you're knocked out. So we want something that's not going to restrict the blood flow. Uh, this is one of the new designs on the market. Again, when we pick this harness up, we want to make sure it's adjusted properly like a four-leg bridle. I can take certain stitch patterns here and make sure they line up on both sides. If I've got one that's higher on one side than the other, I can adjust it through here. I want to make sure that the same thing happens on the front. Again, it's like a four-leg bridle. When I put this particular harness on, uh, a lot of people take it out of the bag because it has a X pad on it. It's important that we pull out the excess webbing that gets caught up in this thing. So we have the torso adjusted properly to begin with. Sometimes people just leave that excess material on there. They think the torso is too short. Uh, they'll lengthen this and all kinds of problems can happen in a drop. Now when putting this harness on, again, we don't want the leg straps like this. If I have it in this situation, I can lower this torso, getting these leg straps more horizontal to the ground. Again, when I bend down, this harness should move with me and not against me. That's most of the uh, adjustment problems that people have in the field, that the harness may slip all the time because they've got like what's going to wedge. It's pulling against their body all the time. Let's bring the torso down where it should be, but let's bring the leg straps up where they should be. Also, being a chest strap, we want it at the chest. 
We don't want it at the belly. A lot of times, you know, iron workers will fall first. It's not that uncommon to fall through one of these things. Even if we have this adjusted properly, uh, we don't want it up in this range. You know, everything's going to go up in a drop. Now in this configuration, if I take a drop in this harness, instead of having the tourniquet on, I have a lot more surface area. Or I actually have something where I can sit on. Um, uh, it gives you another option besides the exercise straps, especially if I'm knocked out, I'm in a saddle to begin with. So it gives your employees a little more time as far as rescue is concerned. Now with the UltraSafe uh, product line, we already have one block and tackle system that uh, the fire departments and a lot of the mine rescue teams have helped us put together through the years. Uh, here's a, a new product from Germany that we have to add to uh, different scenarios, especially in windmills or tower cranes. It's pretty much a self-rescuer or it also can be uh, used with the rescue pool like our other system. Um, the components are basically uh, carabiner on each end. This will uh, allow you to self-rescue at about three foot a second. If you've got a tower crane that's on, on fire, uh, this, uh, you can put 500 foot of line on this. If you're in a windmill where you've got the same situation, hopefully it'll allow them to self-rescue themselves. If the person's knocked out or we can't reach them, we also can uh, get this optional rescue pole. Or again, you know, if we have this harness adjusted properly in the drop, the D-ring is going to go above our head. It will allow us to hook this in. So we'll be able to pull the person up or down uh, to the lower level. So uh, we'll demonstrate that and see how it works. Here I, we have one of our victims in uh, one of our new uh, trauma pad harnesses. Uh, how do you feel so far? Feel good. You're not going to pass out on me? No. Feel pretty good. We're going to put a little pressure on him, see how he feels. Let's go ahead and uh, raise him up right now. Now, in a drop, we can see as this goes up, the D-ring goes above his head. Let's stop him right there. How are we doing so far? Feel pretty comfortable? Can I go ahead and go on my break now and come back and get you later? Or do you no want problem. us to rescue him now? <laughs> okay, we're going to rescue him now. So now that the D-ring is slide up above him, he has the pads on his legs. It's not constricting the blood flow. He feels a little more comfortable. He actually has a, a, a butt seat in there too. Let's go ahead and hook into him with our new system. See if we can rescue him. Okay, now that we have him hooked, one of the things that we want to do is take the tension or take the slack out of the line. He's going to be hooked to a lanyard. We don't want to cut that lanyard and uh, have another uh, jolt on the body. So now that we have that, now that our operator up top can turn the wheel. And do you feel you're lifting up a little, a little bit? Yeah. I'm okay, so we're lifting them up. Now that we've got the tension off the lanyard, or in this situation, a quick release hook, we can go ahead and release that. And now this gives us an option to ra raise or lower the gentleman. Uh, again, he's got his trauma pads on. Uh, let's just go ahead and lower him to the ground. At a controlled rate. Now, how does our victim hit? Now, if this was a real situation, what we would do, of course, is get him to the ground. We would lay him down in the seated position. We would have him sit up in the seated position. We don't know how much toxicity has developed in this range here. We would release one leg strap. We would allow the blow up to flow up into the torso, in through the kidneys, in through the liver to filter that. Five minutes later, we might click the next one off and allow another five minutes. Let him sit there for 10 to 15 minutes. Then we get the victim up. What happens is normally they'll just click the leg straps off and the blood will run into the torso, causing a toxic shock or toxic death. Now let's do a, uh, another test run at a higher uh, height uh, using our test weights. We're going to perform a test drop now with a 220 pound rigid test weight to kind of simulate what would happen in a tower crane, a windmill, uh, in an emergency situation in case someone had to uh, self repel and what the speed of uh, drop would be. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a drop and see what happens. Again, you saw a nice controlled drop. Uh, this will handle up to 500 foot of rope, uh, which we handle most situations, uh, you know, as far as the highest tower crane, well, tower cranes or windmills in the country. And it's a good thing to have on site in case something goes wrong.